This is the story of The Chipmunk Adventure. You can read along with me in your book. You will know it is time to turn the page when you hear the chimes ring like this. Let's begin now. One bright summer morning, Alvin was helping Dave pack for a trip to Europe. Please take me with you, Dave. I need some culture in my life. I can't, Alvin. This is strictly a business trip. And now you guys be good, and I'll see you in a few weeks. Alvin waved sadly as Dave's taxi left. Simon patted him on the shoulder. Don't worry, Alvin. You'll get to see the world soon enough. Now come on. The Chipettes are waiting for us. They walked to a soda shop where Brittany greeted Alvin. Boy, you sure look depressed. Let's play a video game to cheer you up. Nearby, a woman named Claudia Furstein was complaining to her brother Klaus. We have five million dollars in diamonds to smuggle overseas. And we can't get anyone to deliver them. And all because of Jamal. He knows everyone we've used and takes our diamonds away from them. We have to find someone new to carry them. Someone Jamal would never suspect. Brittany and Alvin were playing a game called Around the World in 30 Days. With a laugh, Brittany shot into the lead and won. Alvin glared at her. You'd never beat me if this were for real. If I had the money, I'd race you around the world right now. Claudia's eyes lit up. She just found the perfect people to smuggle her diamonds. Young man, my brother and I couldn't help overhearing you. I bet him one million dollars that you boys can beat the girls in a race around the world. Alvin couldn't believe his ears. You want us to go around the world? This is fantastic! Claudia explained the contest. We'll supply everything you need, and the winner will get a hundred thousand dollars. Alvin could hardly contain himself. What do you say, Brittany? I say get ready to lose again, Alvin. The next day, the chipmunks and chipettes arrived at the Firstine's elegant estate. A pair of hot air balloons were tied down behind their mansion, ready to go. Simon tried to hold Alvin back. You know that Dave wouldn't approve of this, Alvin. Let's forget the whole thing. Alvin gave Claudia a big smile. Don't listen to him. We're thrilled to be going. Claudia announced the rules. Each team will take a different route. We've included 12 dolls among your supplies. To prove you've gone all the way around the world, you must trade dolls with friends of ours in a dozen different cities. Here are your maps. Alvin's eyes gleamed. Let's get going! As the balloons lifted off, Claudia smiled at Klaus. What a brilliant idea! <laughs> Jamal will never suspect them in a million years. In Mexico, Alvin checked the map. We leave the first doll under the little sombrero at the Clock and Taco restaurant. Oh boy! Food! Theodore walked up to the window. They made the trade and were starting back when Theodore heard music. Hey, a fiesta! That looks like fun! As the boys danced, a muscular man stood nearby, speaking into a phone. They just made their first drop off, Mr. Jamal. Meanwhile, the Chipettes had landed in Bermuda. Looking for their contact, they boarded a ship where Brittany found a note. He's scuba diving, but we can't wait. Let's go down after him. The girls dove underwater to an ancient shipwreck. Suddenly, a man swam at them with a spear gun. But when he saw Eleanor's doll, he revealed a doll of his own, and they traded. Back on the surface, Jeanette dried off, grumbling. By the way, you greeted us. You think we were carrying diamonds in these dolls? As the days went by, 
the two teams traveled the world, following their maps and trading doll after doll. One day, when the chipmunks were at an outdoor market in Athens, Alvin looked up and saw the chipettes. Brittany, what are you doing here? We're headed for Cairo. The trip's in a breeze. <laughs> Hasn't it, Jeanette? It has. Uh-oh, uh, yes. And how about yours, Alvin? A piece of cake. People are crazy about us wherever we go. While they spoke, the muscular man watched them once again. Perfect. They're all together. I'll take them to Jamal right now. As he sneaked up behind them, Simon noticed someone shopping nearby. Guys, look over there! It's Dave! He must be in Athens on business! Let's get out of here! Just as the muscular man leaped to grab them, the chipettes and chipmunks dashed off. Jamal's man fell flat on his face. Ooh. Dave gasped. <gasps> that couldn't be Alvin and the boys, could it? Before Dave could find out, the teams were in their balloons heading for the next drop-off. Soon the chipettes were flying low over Egypt. As they floated along, four metal hooks reached up and snagged them out of the sky. The girls were brought before the local sheik, who was only six years old. So, these are the girls Jamal wanted us to capture. Brittany's eyes blazed at the boy. If you don't release us immediately, you're in big trouble, Buster. The sheik's smile broadened. You're cute. Jamal can have the dolls, but you will stay here and become my wife. Your wife? <laughs> Dream on, Tiny Tim. Eleanor stepped forward. <laughs> Your Highness, you don't want to marry her. She has an awful temper. A challenge, Jeanette. That's right. And she can't cook, and she's not very tidy, and she's very selfish, and... The Sheik interrupted. The wedding will take place at dawn. The chipettes were taken to the bridal suite. A moment later, the door opened and a servant entered. He was carrying a baby penguin in his arms. Brittany saw a note on the collar. A wedding present from the sheik? Gee, whatever happened to diamonds and rubies? Eleanor looked more closely at the penguin. He doesn't seem to be feeling very good. Brittany, the poor thing is homesick. I'm not thrilled to be here myself. We've got to escape. Late that night, the girls took the penguin and their dolls and sneaked out of the palace past some very frightening snakes. The girls raced to the balloon and lifted off just in time. Jeanette cradled the baby penguin in her lap. We've got to take him home to Antarctica, Brittany. Otherwise, he'll die. We can't. We'll lose the race. The tiny penguin cheeped weakly, and Brittany sighed. He does look pretty bad. Okay. How do we get to Antarctica? When the girls arrived in Antarctica, the baby penguin jumped from the balloon, squawking happily. He raced to the village and into his mother's arms. As the girls were about to leave in their balloon, a muscular man jumped aboard and tried to take their dolls. When the penguin saw this, the whole village began throwing snowballs at the man, knocking him from the balloon. Before he knew what had hit him, he was on the ground, buried up to his neck in snow. As the girls floated off in their balloon, Eleanor turned to her sisters. I don't get it. Why would anyone go to all that trouble to steal these little dolls? Brittany hugged one. Because they're so cute. Jeanette looked doubtful. There's more to it than that, Brittany. I'm going to open one up. <laughs> Look! It's full of diamonds! And then this whole race was just to get us to smuggle diamonds for Klaus and Claudia. We've got to find the boys and tell them. At that moment, the boys were making camp on the island of Fiji. Theodore shivered as he listened to the jungle sounds. I, I hope there aren't any cannibals around here. Alvin climbed into his sleeping bag. Relax. There isn't a cannibal within a hundred miles. When Alvin woke up the next morning, he looked over to where Theodore had been sleeping. <gasps> Simon, he's gone! Do you think... Oh, no! Suddenly, they were surrounded by spear-carrying natives. <laughs> the boys were marched to a village and brought before a familiar figure dressed in lavish robes. Theodore, are you okay? Okay? Uh, 
find in heaven. I get all the food I want. They call me the Prince of Plenty. Simon translated what the natives were saying to each other. Tonight, the Prince of Plenty will be sacrificed. Alvin rushed in front of Theodore. If you take him, you'll have to take all three of us. That night, the natives built a fire and tied the chipmunks to stakes. As they danced around the helpless chipmunks, three ropes dropped from the sky. Alvin looked up. It's the chip attic. Quick, guys, grab on. A big gust of wind came up, and the balloon pulled the stakes right out of the ground. Theodore looked back at the spear-throwing natives. Shouldn't I thank them? They were very nice to me. Simon ducked a spear. Send them a postcard, Theodore. <laughs> A few days later, Dave's plane was just landing when the Chipettes balloon touched down at the airport. Claudia waved cheerfully. Children, how good to see you. Darlings. Alvin shook his head. Save it. We know about the diamond. Claudia's smile disappeared. Shut up and get in the car. As they pulled away, Claudia poured herself a glass of wine. Let's drink to me. <laughs> Alvin bumped her elbow, splashing the drink into Klaus's face, which sent the car crashing into a lamppost. As the chipmunks and chipettes tumbled out, Jamal's muscular sidekick spotted them. Mr. Jamal, there are the first teens and the kids. They dashed toward the wrecked car. Across the airport, Dave saw what was happening. He ran over and Alvin grabbed him around the knees. Jamal's sidekick held up a badge. We are the police. Officer Jamal has been trying to catch these smugglers for years. Jamal handcuffed the first teams and led them away. Dave listened as Alvin told him about their trip. I'm glad you guys are safe, Alvin, but I'm afraid you did the wrong thing. $100,000! Dave put a hand on his shoulder. Not now, Alvin. But Dave, don't we deserve anything? Alvin! Okay, okay. We'll give you half. Alvin! <laughs> Wake up!